Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Laurent Gallet. I just started a postdoc, a two-year postdoc, or more specifically, uh, I will start officially a postdoc next month with uh, Corinne Chardonnel in Geneva, in collaboration with uh, Anna Palacios in Montpellier and Louis in Montpellier in, in Geneva, uh, about the habitability. So I don't have much to show you today, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to uh, present you the path that I want to follow during these uh, next two years and maybe to modify it as a function of your recommendation and question and so on. So let's start with very brief context. So nowadays we know more than 1,000 and a half uh, planet that has been confirmed. And as you can see in these figures, that shows the uh, number of discovery of exoplanet as a function of the year. Uh, 2014 was quite good, especially thanks to the Kepler mission. Among this object, 30, more than 30 are believed to be in the habitable zone, or maybe not, uh, in a bunch of uh, very different configuration of size and, and radius. Yes, this is famous picture. Uh, so we clearly need to understand this object and their behavior in such an extreme region, that is the the habitable zone, as well as to characterize their atmospheric composition in order to understand and all prepare our future. Uh, first, let's give the definition of the, the habitable zone. So this is a list of uh, definition of the habitable zones that I get from the literature, from my favorite uh, paper. I will not read them, but trust me, and uh, fortunately, they are quite consistent to each other. And the definition of the habitable zone is the region where a rocky planet can maintain liquid water on its surface. But what about habitability? For me, habitability is the sum of the habitable zone plus what I call uh, the lifeability. Uh, the habitable zone only depends on the effective temperatures and luminosity of the stars uh, plus uh, the flux received by the planet from the star given its uh, atmosphere. So this is a snap snapshot of time t. And the life of t is all the other uh, physical mechanisms, such as the tidal interaction, the magnetic interaction, volcanic activity, and so on. So these are the ingredients re required to host life. This is the most challenging part. Unfortunately, today I will focus on the habitable zone. So uh, I, will be very, I will be very brief on this uh, slide because everything was already uh, presented this morning and this afternoon. But uh, the habitable zone is given by this expression from Casting et al. in 1993 that it depends on the luminosity of the star and on quantity SF, that is the effective stellar flux. I used the, uh, the prescription of Copar Prieta 2013 to get uh, this quantity as a function of the effective temperatures. The effective stellar flux is given by the ratio between the outgoing infrared flux from produced by the planet and the net incident stellar flux. And to get these outgoing infrared flux, we need to use 1D radiative convective uh, climate model. Uh, the habitable region limit are usually defined by the runaway greenhouse for the inner edge and the maximum greenhouse for uh, the outer edge. Now, take a look at the dependence of the habitable zone on the stellar parameters. And let's start with uh, the stellar mass. This figure is what we call a spring russell diagram that shows the luminosity as a function of the effective temperatures. These two quantities are somehow uh, the interesting parameter that you need to describe uh, a star. I put here uh, the track for stars between 0.5 and 2 solar masses that I get from the Starable uh, model developed in Geneva by Colin Chardonnay and collaborators uh, for a solar metallicity. And as you can see, the luminosity and effective temperatures increase for increasing mass. So this will have a strong impact on the habitable zone limits. This is um, an animation that I made 
to uh, illustrate the, the, the impact of the mass uh, on the habitable zone limit. This is the evolution of the, of the habitable zone as a function of the effective temperatures for masses between 0.5 and 2 uh, solar masses. The rotation uh, only induce a shift in effective temperature in this, this spring rotation diagram. In these figures from the uh, you can see the spring rotation diagram for one solar mass star in uh, the case of slow and fast rotator. And as you can see here, the only effect of rotation is to induce a shift of 150 Kelvin uh, in effective temperatures, but the luminosity remains almost the same. So this will have uh, a very small impact on the uh, available zone limit. And finally, the metallicity induced a shift in both effective temperatures and uh, luminosity due to opacity effect. And here, uh, the luminosity and effective temperatures increase for decreasing metallicity. So again, this will have a strong impact on the habitable zone uh, limit. This is uh, an animation that I made using the prescription of Kopenhauer in 2013 and uh, the star evolved star structures evolution model. Therefore, again, solar metallicity and star between uh, 0.5 and 2 solar masses. Here you have the mass, the habitable zone limit, and here I put uh, the Ashburn Russell diagram for a one solar mass star, and you can see the evolution here as a function of time. According to this uh, animation, uh, the habitable zone at the sun age is about between uh, 0 0.95 and 1.76 astronomic units, which is quite consistent with uh, Earth. And the Earth habitability lasts from 3 million years to 6 billion years. So we only have 1.5 million years to found uh, an Earth like planet or an um, Earth twin. Uh, before the Earth go outside uh, the habitable zones. And maybe this planet will be discovered thanks to our work today. Who knows? And this is the same animation for uh, Metal 4 star, point 0 0.1. Uh, this is almost the same evolution. Okay, good days. And, okay, about the life ability, so this is what I want to do uh, during the next two years. So I want to implement tidal interaction in the model. And for this, I plan to use my own angular momentum evolution model, okay, to get realistic angular velocity uh, evolution for uh, low mass stars. In order to uh, study the planet migration, how this affect uh, the, uh, the continuous uh, habitable zone or the planet surface condition. And I'll refer you to the Stefan Mathis talk for this. And I, want, I also want to implement the work of Aline Vitato in uh, Geneva about the impact of the stellar winds on the planet, especially on the, uh, the, 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 the planet atmospheres, how the, the, the stellar winds uh, deflect the magnetosphere of the planet and so on, or the question of the, about, about the, the magnetic protection. And for me, these uh, two uh, physical mechanisms are the first order conditions required to sustain life. Okay. And my plan for the next two years, so the main goal of this uh, postdoc is to provide the community with a online tool. Uh, to estimate the habitability. I have a list of things to do, and the most important one uh, would be to get a more detailed definition of habitability in uh, um, uh, about the, the range of mass, radius, and gravity that is required to, to host life on the planet. Uh, so stay tuned for next. And we plan to put this online tool in uh, <coughs> either a site-like or a based website, both hosts at the Geneva University. 
And I let you with uh, open question, and I thank you for your attention.